Dance 104.9. Uh, it's Adam and Joe here on Saturday afternoon on XFM, and it's the exciting part of the Crap Commentary Corner competition in that we're going to establish now. That is the exciting part. Who has won? <laughs> when someone wins. Yeah. So much more exciting than the competition and clip. Um, so we've got two callers on the line. The first is Dan. Hello, Dan. Now then. Uh, now, did you say now then? No. No, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm hallucinating orally. How are you doing, Dan? I'm all right, thank you. And yourself, sir? Well, well I'm, I'm doing absolutely brilliantly. And cool. we, we're, we're very interested to know what, what you think it is, Dan. What do you think that clip was from? It was from Garden State. Right. Garden State. The film, yeah. Yeah, and do you know who was, who was talking there? That was, uh, Andrew, that was the guy, Andrew Largeman, and he was played by Zach Braff. Zach Braff. Zach Braff from Scrubs. And he kind of talks like this, does he? Zach Braff? Does he kind of talk like this? Like a kind of this? Like a kind of puppet? <laughs> <laughs> is, is Garden State a puppet film? Is it? Not that I'm aware. No. <laughs> no, Dan, you've been bad. <laughs> you've been hurt yourself that's, now, that's bad. A good, that's a good wrong answer. We love a good wrong answer. That's Thank such you a good much. wrong answer. Do you want a copy of National Treasure? Oh, uh, no, actually. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. Well done, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Well done, Dan. Very, very good to speak very to you. Very clever man in, in new and original ways. Can I just um, ask you finally, Dan, before we leave you, did you enjoy Garden State? It rocked. <laughs> okay, you're insane. Um, thanks so much for calling in, though, Dan. That was, that was really uh, enlightening. And uh, we've got Gary on the line. Let's see if Gary's done any better with this one. Hey, Gary, Hi, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Good, good. Now, who do you think was speaking in the clip we played earlier? Uh, speaking, I think it was uh, Gonzo and Rizzo de Rat. <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What, what film do you think they were talking about? Uh, Muppets from Space. Yes! Yeah. You are correct, Gary. Have you seen Muppets from Space? I've got it on DVD. Yeah, but have <laughs> you seen Muppets from Space? <laughs> 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 We've all got DVDs. <laughs> have you watched it, though? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, I, sh I should say my wife's got it, really, than me. Right. But that's it's the old one, you know. It's not mine. It's What's mine. her excuse? Um, she's sad. Yeah. yeah. She must be. She married me. You know what? I was excited about Gary. Muppets from Space. I remember thinking, this is going to be the one. And it started off quite well, but then just didn't really go anywhere. Yeah. It's for kids. Uh, Muppets Christmas Carol's a good film. Muppets yeah, Christmas yeah. Carol is the classic yeah. Muppet movie, don't you reckon? I wouldn't say it was yeah. a good. I wouldn't say it was a good film. Come on, <laughs> Joe Cornish. But it's it's certainly en more entertaining than Muppets from Space. It's, it's the only Jeez. decent film Michael Caine's Ooh. ever done. <laughs> yeah. well, yes, good point, Gary. I agree with that. <laughs> well, congratulations, Gary. What would you like, Freaks or National Treasure? I like National Treasure, please. There we go. Congratulations. Yes. Thanks for calling. Thanks for listening, Gary. That's yeah, a, a crap commentary competition for this week. Good job. Thank you very much for your calls, Dan and Gary. <laughs> hey, and you know, I should tell you that the director... Get this. What? Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah, who was the director? Tim Hill. Timmy Hill? Yeah. Tim, big, the big Tim Hill. The Timster. The Timster. I thought it was, um, um, you know, Frank Oz's son. Uh, he's involved, but he's only doing the voices. I'm the, sure who is it? directing puppets. Uh, he's had enough of it. Right. I imagine. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Uh, there you go. Well, this is Adam and Joe, and this is The Bravery. Yeah, this is uh, Adam and Joe on XFM. London's 104.9, also available to listen on, on to on the internet, if you're not in London. Or on your television. You can sit there in front of a blank oh, screen brilliant. and watch it. I can't remember what channel it's on. Do you remember, Lila? On digital TV. What channel XFM is? I thought it was on oh, come Sky 864 NTL 293. Brilliant stuff. There we go. <laughs> so, um, this that week we went, what? <laughs> I was going to say that was the bravery with Fearless. Thank you. This this week we went to the, uh, Adam and I went to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy premiere and party, didn't we, Ad? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it was, it, it's a fantastic film. We highly recommend you see it. Very visually dense. I think I need to see it again because there was so much going on I couldn't take it all in at times. Yeah, there's loads of sort of hidden little, uh, Easter egg-y type yeah, things. Yeah, it's going to be a, a, a monstrously good DVD. Yeah. Um, but at the part, and they had a fantastic party afterwards, they had, is it called the Space Hog? The Hog Pod. Uh, they had a big spaceship outside the venue. The venue, oh, yeah. the, the venue was the Freemasons Hall, which is this amazing Freemasonry church in London that's usually closed to the public. And they had this huge party there, and they had bits of the set from Hitchhikers there. They had Vogons around the place. All the waiters were dressed as Arthur Dent and aliens and stuff like that. 
and all the cast were there, apart from most Def, he didn't make it, but Sam Rockwell was there. Sam Rockwell Zoe, was Dash, staggering around. Dashnell, Martin Freeman. I had a lovely talk to Martin Freeman's mum. Oh, yeah. I don't want to go into too much detail, because he's, a, he's a sensibly, he's a private person, but she was a lovely woman, and is a lovely woman. Yeah. What a lovely woman. And she said whenever, uh, her and her husband feel a bit down, uh, they just watch a whole lot of The Office. And I think she called it, that's, uh, Marty time. We have Marty time. <laughs> And we just watch. That's my son. Wow. He's brilliant. That's amazing. Isn't well, that fantastic? That would be brilliant if you were a parent. Can you imagine? Unfortunately, that's a, a joy denied to our parents. I don't know. Because what are they going to do? Struggle through the Adam and Joe DVD? Yes. Yes, I Mine suppose. Love it. Bucky time. Bucky and, Bucky and Bobo Cor time. Corny time. <laughs> uh, so, but listen, anyway, Adam, we, I was talking about Adam, uh, what? I was talking to Adam about the Hitchhiker's, uh, premiere, and he was complaining that he didn't get any photographer action on the carpet. Well, I wasn't complaining. I mean, no. it's, it's a foregone conclusion. But, yeah. you know, I haven't been to a premiere in a long time, and I've also got quite a big beard at the moment, because yeah. I'm going to Edinburgh and doing this character. So thing. there's a point to this. And we... I didn't get photographed. Yeah, well... Well, we both... I just walked straight past. I even, d you know, I don't expect anything. And, uh... But we've got an email here from a guy called Jeff Spicer, who's a photographer. He says, Good afternoon, Adam and Joe. As, as, as a regular listener to your show, I'd like to thank you for making Saturdays an even more enjoyable day. However, on a professional note, I have to say that I was very disappointed when you failed to stop on the blue carpet when you arrived at the Hitchhiker's premiere this week. Despite the fact that it was more important for me to get a shock of... Uh, a shot? A shot of Rebecca Luz with her recently purchased silicon implants, I tried to get you to stop and be photographed by myself and my press photographer colleagues. Rory McGrath was quite happy to stop, and his beard is not as good as yours. He sent a picture of, Mag uh, of McGrath. There you go. So why are you so shy? <laughs> wow. I'm we sure you'll mention the premiere on today's show. I'm waiting to hear your views on the film. Uh, whatever you do, though, do not refer to the invited press photographers at the event as paparazzi. The paps are the underclass of photography who hang around outside West End nightclubs and who follow celebrities to the shops every day. Keep up, keep up the good work on Saturdays. Blah, blah, blah. That's nice, isn't it? Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. So that was an extremely coherent communique. Jeff was, was baying for, for, for some pap action. He wasn't baying. Do you know what? I thought I heard someone saying, Adam, as Adam. I went in. And my wife even tapped me on the shoulder and said, there you go, darling. Yeah. Someone said your name. Well, some people <laughs> shouted Joe, but I d I, there were only about two of them. Yeah, and exactly. so I thought, well, that's not enough volume or demand. I just put, because I, I, I got my fingers burnt once before, I think maybe at the Q Awards years ago or uh, some, something like that. Uh, maybe at the Brits even. Do you remember yeah. we went into the Brits? And, uh, I thought I heard someone saying, Adam! And I sort of rushed out and went, Yes, here I am! Take your photographs mm. now! Mm. And no one wanted. Yeah, we haven't been on the telly for so long. It's like shouting for Hufty on the word or something. <laughs> but, Jeff, in future, why don't you just shout your name? Shout Jeff Spicer! And we'll run And then we'll team. react. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There we go. But, um, yeah, you have to make it much clearer than that. Adam Buxton, please come over here to have your photograph taken. That's, that's the thing I need Just make an appointment. Yeah. Just call us. Get our home numbers. We've, quite easy. We've got quite a lot of free time. Mm. Here is Pavement. Go back. Oh, it's fantastic. That's, uh, Gold Sounds from Pavement's album. Crooked Rain, Crooked Rain. This is Adam and Joe on XFM. Stick with us. We'll be back very shortly. <laughs> XFM. It's something to think about, Stop isn't it? it. You're blowing my mind. That's Kasabian with Cut Off, and before that you heard Banquet by the Block Party. Hey, can I read a quick, uh, email, Adam? Wish you would. Hi, Adam and Joe. Just listening to the show, and you mentioned your DVD. Is there one of the TV show? Because I've tried to find it and couldn't. Used to love the show. Still vividly remember being in hysterics over that Swizzle Sticks game show spoof. Nice to have you on the radio. Keep it up. Quizzle stick, it wasn't. Quizzle stick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so, so, is there a DVD? Uh, yes, Joe, there is. Uh, there oh. is a DVD. It's called The Best Bits from the Adam and Joe Show. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the whole of the mm. Uh, mm. shows that mm. we put on there, but mm. it's an amazing compilation really? featuring many, many jaw-dropping wow. extras. And it should be available in your local large retail record shop, your HMV, your Virgin, your whatever they are. Mm. I've seen a few copies around myself, and I always check. And I've been pleased to see that they really? do stock it. I must pick one up on the way home. Yeah. Have you ever bought one of our videos, our uh, DVDs? No, no. Listen, we can't talk about this for, for this long. Can we not? I don't think so. I think it's improper. I was planning on going on for another five minutes about our DVD. Weren't we going to ch chat about the BAFTAs? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, we got passed over for a BAFTA again, again. this year. Um, last and chances, no noms for the last chances. <laughs> no nods for the last chances for Bucky, unfortunately. But I was in good being ignored company because there was no nominations as well 
for The Mighty Boosh, mm. and no nominations for Peep Show. Mm, that's that's a, a bit of a scandal, isn't is, it? I mean, it's a, well, m The Boosh is a scandal as well, but Peep Show, double scandal, because The, the Peep Show has a, a potentially massively broad appeal. Mm, it's mm, pretty much mm, the best, mm. most consistent, gettable sitcom since The Office, I would say. Yup. And, uh, amazing performances, brilliant kind of script, and... I've been working with, uh, David Mitchell recently. Yeah, He's yeah. a very funny, very clever man. Very they're, nice man. They're both funny. The other guy, what's he called? Um, uh... Tommy... T Webb. T Tom, Tim, Toddy Pipkins. Jimmy Webb. Yeah. What's he called? James Webb? Oh, dear, I'm not sure. But anyway, the, Mitchell and Webb are the guys who star in it. It's written by, uh, other people. Not them. Not them, although they do contribute to the writing. Anyway, why wasn't it nominated? That's, uh, that's just demented. Because it's all corrupt. It's all corrupt! The, the, the BAFTAs. They're, what are you saying? The one that's corrupt! Oh my god. It's all to do with a little cabal of, of, cabal? of, of co 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 commissioning editors. It is. It's all corrupt. It's all Madonna corrupt. Madonna involved in it? Yeah. Cabala? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's, it seems that way because how could they get passed over when, let's see, who was in their category that, or, that they should have been in? Basically, best comedy performance, which they could easily have won, both those guys, went to Matt Lucas and Dave Walliams. I mean, that's uncontroversial. Everyone, everyone loves the Little Britain guys. Uh, they were up against Rory Bremner, Julia Davis, and Tamsin Gregg. Um, all of those, well, Julia Davis, that's a pretty good turn. Uh, she could have won that one. But they could also have been nominated for... Comedy program series or uh, yeah, comedy program or series. Little Britain won that again. So um, now you're just complaining about ca the category titles. No, I'm not. I'm just saying. Oh, they could have right. Th th these are the things. Yeah, that the picture could have been nominated. Yeah, for. yeah. Because uh, they were up. They they would have been up against Catherine Tate, Harry Hill's TV Burp, and the Mark Steele lectures. Now, no disrespect to any of those people, especially. Burp should take it. Uh, burp should have taken. Burp that should one. have taken that. Burp's fantastic. Burp is amazing. The burp. The burp. But, I'm, um, you know, Mark Steele lectures, I mean, it's great and all, but, it's come no on, bub. they could have found room for a peep show or the mighty boosh in there. That's just my opinion. Mm. Sitcom award went to Black Books, and it was up against Green Wing, Nighty Night, and the Vicar of Dibley Christmas Special. Well, that was good, wasn't it, when she dipped her head in chocolate? <laughs> I remember <laughs> that, I watched that, the Vicar of Dibley Christmas Special. Was it good? No. I mean, it some good telly. What did you, did you see Shirley Ghostman on Jonathan Ross? I heard about it. I heard wow. He went too far. <laughs> that was incredible. Maybe we should talk about that after another record. I'd like to talk about that. Okay, stick with Adam and Joe. Right now, here is a track from I'm Trying to Find Out. Turin Breaks! It's a track from the new Turin Breaks album. This is called Fishing for a Dream. That was very nice indeed. That was, uh, Turin Breaks and Fishing for, fishing for a Dream. Mm. Fishing mm. for a Dream. Mm. Mm. So, uh, this is Adam and Joe on XFM. Shirley Ghostman on Jonathan Ross. I know it was on, I think it was the week before last, wasn't it? Or, you know, Friday, the Friday before last. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody out there saw it. I'm sure they did. Um, if you didn't, Shirley Ghostman is a, is a sort of spoof psychic character created by the very talented Mark Wotton. Uh, and he appeared on Jonathan Ross's chat show. Uh, the two other guests on the chat show were Nicole Kidman and David Schwimmer. Oh, yeah. So it was an unusual fit. A-list. For an unknown BBC Three comedian who, whether he's good or bad, is unknown by the general public. He's well, also... By, by the massive general public. By mean, the massive general well public. Known. Yeah, yeah. Certainly unknown by the uh, studio audience. Sure. And it was an incredible bit of car crash telly. And, uh, you know, if there's any justice, it'll pop up in top ten cringeworthy TV moments for eternity. Uh, it was better than the David Blaine on, on This Morning. It really was toe-curlingly amazing. <laughs> wow, what happened? Mark Wooden is brilliant, the show's pretty good, but uh, Jonathan, obviously, we, the, the, the problem about this is, I know, and you know, we, Adam and Joe, we, we know everybody involved in this, but... Uh, I, I need to tip my hat to them because it was the worst, most incredible thing I've ever seen. Poor old Mark Wooden just died and he took Kidman and Schwimmer down with him. And there's an amazing sort of unstated uh, sort of understanding when American sh uh, stars go on British shows to pretend that they know everybody. Yeah. You know, like Will Smith was on Anton Deck that same night and he was uh, doing gunging and stuff and he was acting as if Anton Deck were his close friends. And Alan Shearer was someone he really knew and liked, and stuff like this. Yeah, guys! Yeah, sure, Alan! That's not a very good Will Smith impression. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, guys! <laughs> but you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, Dick. There's this sort of unspoken sort of, uh, yeah. thing that they're all friends. And Mark Wooden's appearance on, uh, on the Jonathan Ross show really gave the lie to that.
because he made some very anti-Semitic comments. Uh, in character. In character. Yeah. To David Schwimmer. He made some really feeble, you know, lame funny. There's a certain sort of humour that's funny because it's so lame. Yeah. But often that's mistaken by the general public for just... Lameness. Lameness. <laughs> and, and it, it was, uh, you know...